Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you how you can regain control over your class meetings in Microsoft Teams. Do you have a troublemaker student who likes to boot other students, mute other students, or maybe they present when they shouldn't? And worst of all, maybe they chat behind your back. How rude. I'm gonna show you how you could regain control in an individual meeting, and then also how you could set defaults for all meetings moving forward. Along with that, I also wanna show you how you could track attendance, so you know how your students are engaging during a meeting and then how you could also check that after the meeting. Now, hopefully you're watching this video before your students do, otherwise chaos might ensue. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's see how we can take advantage of this. The first way to regain control over your class meetings on Microsoft Teams is to make all of your students wait in the lobby. When students join a meeting ahead of the teacher, you can have chats happen, you can have people converse with one another, maybe they make fun of others and you don't want that to happen. Now here I'm an instructor at the Kevin Cookie Company University and I have my own classes that I conduct. Here two of my students, they're really hardworking students, I have Nestor and Diego and look it looks like the class is already in session so let me go ahead and join it. Here I am in the meeting and it looks like both Nestor and Diego are already here. Great, it looks like they were very timely, in fact even more timely than me. Let me just click into the chat just to make sure no funny business was was going on and oh no oh wow it looks like they were both trash talking the Kevin Cookie Company and they even used emojis in their response wow Miss Fields has nothing to worry about if I set up a lobby I could prevent any conversations from happening before I join the meeting by making people wait in the lobby I join the meeting first and then everyone else joins after me let's see how we can do this to make your students wait in the lobby go back to the meeting details view and within meeting details click on meeting options this drops me in meeting options and the very first option here is who can bypass the lobby. Currently, it's set to people in my organization. With these top three settings, your students will be able to join the meeting even if you haven't joined the meeting yet, and then they can freely converse. However, if you change it to only me, you have to join the meeting first, and then you can admit all of your students. I'm going to set this to only me. Down below, you also have the option to let callers bypass the lobby. What is a caller? Well, that's someone who dials in with, say, their cell phone or a telephone. Currently, I also have that set to no. Now that I've set these new settings, let's click on save and see how this takes effect. I've now rejoined the meeting with my new settings, and here I can see that Diego and one other are waiting in the lobby. Also, up here on the participant icon, I can see that two people are waiting. Let's click on view lobby. This shows me the lobby and I can see that both Diego and Nestor are waiting. I can accept individuals or I could simply click on admit all. Before I admit everyone, let's see what it looks like for Diego. Here within this view, I can see text on the top that tells me when the meeting starts will let people know you're waiting. So at this point as Nestor or Diego, I'm simply waiting in the lobby and once I'm admitted, I'll be able to contribute to the meeting. Next, let's click on admit all. Here now I can see that everyone has joined the meeting and now we could start the conversation conversation and I don't have to worry about people talking behind my back. I'm now back in the meeting and at least the start of the meeting this time went smoothly. However, chaos can still ensue. Right now I'm in Diego's view and to be honest, between the two of us, Diego's a little bit of a troublemaker. And right now everyone's a presenter in this meeting. I'm the organizer and both Diego and Nestor are presenters. As a presenter, you have quite a bit of power. Here, Diego can go over to another student in my class, here's Nestor, and he could click on the ellipses. With in the ellipses, he can mute Nestor. Maybe Nestor's in the middle of asking a question, he could mute him. Also, worst of all, he could boot Nestor entirely from the class, and my students might start disappearing. Also, let's say that Nestor wanted to share his screen and show something. Diego could make him an attendee, and then he won't be able to share his screen anymore. So right now, Diego has a whole bunch of power. How do we change this? Well, let's go back to meeting options. Back on the meeting details screen, let's click into meeting options. Back within meeting options, towards the bottom, there's another option called who can present. And the title here is a little bit deceptive because present implies that you could just share your screen or maybe show some slides. But as we just saw with Diego, when you're a presenter, you have quite a bit of power. Over here in the dropdown, we can change who can present or mute or remove others from the meeting. Here currently it's set to everyone, so whoever joins 
the meeting has that control. However, if me as a teacher, if I wanna be the only one with this control and this power, I could set it to only me. Let's select this and see what happens. I'm now back in the meeting and I see two different categories now. I see all of the presenters and I'm the only presenter. And down below now, I see that both Diego and Nestor are attendees. Now here again within Diego's view, if I click on Nestor, here I could only pin Nestor for my own view. However, I can no longer remove him from the meeting. I can no longer mute and unmute. Also, if I look over at my meeting controls down here, I can no longer share my screen unless teacher Kevin lets me do that. Unfortunately though, Diego is a pretty crafty troublemaker. Over here, he can now unmute his microphone and he can disrupt my class. Can I mute him and then make it so that he can no longer unmute himself? Let's go back to meeting options. Back within meeting options, there's an option to allow attendees to unmute and currently it's set to yes. Let me change this to no and this way Diego won't be able to unmute himself and he'll have to stay silent. I've heard enough of him recently. Let's click on save. Diego thinks he's so smart but now down on my meeting controls the mute button is disabled so no matter how many times he clicks on it he's gonna have to listen to my lecture silently. I've now muted all of my students, but what if someone has a question and they wanna ask me something? Well, they can use the hand raise feature. Right up here, you can click on this to toggle your hand up or toggle your hand down. Here, for instance, Nestor just raised his hand and here I see him get highlighted in the experience. If I now want Nestor to go ahead and ask his question, I can hover over Nestor, click on the ellipses and I can allow him to unmute and then he can ask his question. My class is now a much much more civilized place where we're raising hands and we're taking turns. Now the meeting's getting close to wrapping up and I wanna keep track of when everyone joined and when people started leaving. Some people might have come early and then left and then rejoined towards the end. Within the participants view over on the right hand side, I can click on the ellipses and I can download an attendance list. Let's take a look. This exports a CSV file where I can see everyone who joined the meeting and I could also see a timestamp for when they joined. I can see when they join, if they leave, and then if they rejoin. So all the information about when they participated in the meeting is available to me. Now that our meeting is wrapping up, I want to end it. Up in the top right hand corner, I have a button where I can leave the meeting. However, I might have the same problem that happened at the beginning of the meeting where I leave and then conversations continue. Instead of simply leaving the meeting, I can click on this drop down and I can end the meeting. This will end the meeting for everyone and this way not only will I leave the meeting, but then Nestor and Diego will leave the meeting as well. I've now left the Microsoft Teams meeting and I feel like I've finally gotten a little bit more control. Now, just a moment ago, I showed you how you can track attendance for an individual meeting. But what if you wanna track attendance for a week's worth of classes or maybe a month's worth of classes? Luckily, you can do that in Microsoft Teams. Over on the left hand side navigation, click on the ellipses and then search for insights. This will pop up the insights app. Let's click on this. If you wanna have quick access to insights in the future, you can simply right click on it and then go to pin. Within insights on the main dashboard, I have an aggregate view of what participation looks like in all of my classes. Here I can see daily active users by day and I could even see it by hour of the day. Now, as a teacher, I really wanna track how individual students are doing. Up here on the top bar, I can click on reports. Within reports, I can set the date range and then I could export a CSV. Let's export the CSV to see what's contained within this file. Within the CSV report, you can see by day, who the student is, what their email address is, and then you can see how they participated. You can see how much time they spent in meetings, how much time they spent on assignments in Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So you have a whole bunch of analytics to see how your students are engaging with your class. Now, so far, I've shown you a whole bunch of ways that you can regain control over your class. The only downside, though, is every single class that you have, you have to remember to always reapply all of these different settings. Wouldn't it be great to just set a policy or the default value? Well, luckily, you can do that. The only caveat, though, is you need to be the admin to do this. If you're a teacher and you don't have admin permissions, well, lucky for you, you could simply pass it on to your admin and have them do it for you. As an admin, sign in to office.com and over on the left hand side there's an icon for the admin center let's click on that 
Within the admin center, we need to navigate to the Teams admin center. To do that, over on the left hand side, there's the option to show all. Let's click on that. Within show all, let's scroll down and then click on Teams. Within the Teams admin center, over on the left hand side, let's click on Meetings. Within Meetings, let's click on Meeting Policies. This opens up all of my different meeting policies. Let's go ahead and add a new policy. Within Meeting Policies, I can type in a name for my new policy. I'm going to call this Student. Next, I need to give my policy a description, and I'm gonna say that this applies to all students at the Kevin Cookie Company Master Chef School. So basically, any one of my students will have this policy, and this will define what their state is when they join a meeting. Within the meeting policies view, let's scroll all the way to the bottom and here we'll see different settings related to participants and guests. And they'll probably look very familiar to what we already walked through. Here for instance, there's a setting that says roles that have presenter rights in meetings. Once again, when we saw earlier, everyone by default was a presenter. I wanted my students to be attendees. I can click on this and here I could set it so only the organizer has presenter rights. So basically me as a teacher, let's select that. Next, there's the other option to automatically admit people. Right now it's set to everyone in your organization. By leaving it with this setting, this means that everyone would simply bypass the lobby. Me as a teacher, I wanna make sure that I admit the students, so I'm gonna change it to organizer only. Down at the very bottom, there's another option to allow chat in meetings. So let's say a meeting is going on and maybe my students are talking when they shouldn't be, I can also disable chat in meetings. Next, once I'm done configuring my policy, I can save it. Now that I've created my policy, to assign the policy to my students, over on the left hand side, click on users, and then you'll see all the students and all the users within your organization. Over here, I'm gonna click on Adele. Once I click into Adele, over on the right hand side, let's click on policies. Within policies, I can see all of the policies that are assigned to Adele. I can click here to edit those. Over on the right hand side, I can see all of the different policies. And here, when I click on this drop down list, I can now assign a policy to Adele. Just like that, I can assign a default policy. So as a teacher, I no longer have to worry about configuring these individual settings each time for a meeting. Instead, these will now be the default. All right, well, that's how you can regain control over your classes in Microsoft Teams. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. To see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see me cover any other videos in the future, drop a note down below. All right, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.